Hey guys, it's Cass, creator of Vibe. Today we're gonna break down um, progressions for a tripod headstand. Um, so I'll show you what the end goal is first and then we'll get started. Okay, so the end goal is gonna be to pike press into that tripod headstand. Um, but first, let's just play um, with a few progressions. So the first one we'll do is just a very, um, you know, general drill that I call dancing toes. Um, it's basically gonna help you find that lift through the pelvic floor. Um, so that lift through the pelvic floor is everything when you invert. So just a quick moment, I like to think of inversions in the four elements. Um, so from the pelvis down through the legs, when you're upside down, that is air. You're lifting that pelvis as high to the sky as you possibly can, right? From the rib cage down through your foundation, which in this case, the tripod headstand, it's the crown of the head, um, and then the hands, um, that's gonna be earth, right? You're rooting it to earth from the rib cage down. And then um, the core is the element of fire, right? So you're really drawing in that fire. Um, and be cautious not to like grip the muscle. Like when you're gonna like show somebody your muscle, you kind of like tense it. Um, that's not how we use these muscles. It's really like an inner mechanic, like a corseting. It's more of how can I corset? How can I pull the lower rib cage in, right? So that's kind of what our work is with that fire. Um, and then the fourth element is water and that's your breath. That's your breath, right? To, to move fluidly and transition and to explore when you're upside down, you need that element of water present in the breath. It's very fluid. The moment the breath stops, the pose ceases to live, right? So, um, so let's play with dancing toes. Um, if you're not sure where the crown of your head is, a great way to find that is to take your thumb uh, right between the eyebrows on the third eye point, and then you're going to branch it back and let that point your finger touch the center top of your skull. And this is your fontanelle. Um, it's like that soft spot. That's where you want your head placement to be. If you're too far back, you could roll. If you're too far to the forehead, it's gonna feel awkward. So be very princess in the pee about it. Like fidget a little bit, find your sweet spot, and then go. Take your time. Um, sometimes we feel like we need to do it perfect the first time and that's just silly sauce. Like we need time to get it all together, right? So fidget it out. Um, so the first thing we'll do for dancing toes, you bring the crown of the head down, hands where you could see them. You want your hands where you could see them. Why? Because it's a supportive foundation. When your hands are too wide, it's a little bit harder to use, um, you know, your triceps and that arm energy wrapping in. Um, and if the hands are too close to the head, like say that my hands are like right here, well, my elbows feel awkward and my hands can't really do much and I'm gonna end up doing a forward roll and forward rolling feels horrible in headstand, right? So that brings me to another point that if you have any like thoughts of tipping over, like it's not a weakness, it's a choice. Just face the wall. You're gonna be one fist distance from the wall so that if you were to kind of tip, you'd hit Paul wall. He's got your back, right? All right, so we have a few things going on. You have your four elements, right? Hands where you can see them, crown of the head. And then a really important one, I like to do this demo in my classes. So everybody go like this. This is Tim and Turtle. Tim and Turtle's dreams don't come true. Now take your shoulders down, okay? This is Brave Turtle. All of Brave Turtle's dreams come true. <laughs> so the basic sub is that you wanna keep your shoulders off your ears. Now that's different from handstand and form stand. In form stand and handstand, you want to be lifting your shoulders, putting on your headphones as you look at your foundation. And we'll have later videos about that. But for tripod headstand and just sure soft enough period, uh, headstand in general, even supported, you want to do brave turtle. You're pulling the shoulders off of the ear line. Why? Because it's keeping length in your neck. Okay, so let's get back down to get to these dancing toes. Hands where you can see them. Elbows in. Think of like a panini press. Right, brave turtle, crown of the head. Then add the pelvis and start to lift up your pelvic floor. You're using mula bandha. A really simple way to say mula bandha is you're just contracting your pelvic floor muscles to make your pelvis feel lighter. 
If your hamstrings are tighter, you're just gonna bend your knees here to lift your pelvis, right? And it might feel a little awkward, but you do your best, right? So then from here for dancing toes with bent knees or straight, you're gonna just try to lift up your feet and dance them around. And you can go side to side, forward backwards, whatever you want, just kind of playing here. Don't go up really high, stay low to the floor, right? Just a little strength drill, right? When you're done playing with that, you're just gonna sit yourself up tall, stack the palms, close the eyes, and just take two breaths here to let the blood recirculate back down through the body. One more deep breath. All right, so the next one that we'll do um, is just little egg shape, is what I like to call it. Right, so just like a traditional tripod, like back in the day in gym class. So I'll show it to you first and then I'll break it down. Right, so basically you're just stacking your knees onto your triceps. And you're going to squeeze your, your inner edges of your big toes together so you're securing the midline that way. And then stacking that one knee, second knee, and then doing that work where you're securing the midline starts to lift the feet up. When the feet are kind of low to the floor, um, the pelvis drops down. It puts a little more pressure into the wrist and into the head. So you want to be thinking air through that pelvis and air through those feet, earth through your arms and uh, keeping that crown light as a result, and lots of fire, and lots of water breathing, right? <laughs> All right, so when you're ready, let's do it together. Come down to the crown, hands down, lift the pelvis, start to walk your feet in. Now make sure you got everything, crown of the head, hands where you can see them, panini press your bows, braids over your shoulders, are you breathing, okay? Then lift the pelvis high, stack the knees one at a time. You might stay here with just one knee, and that's great, right? Maybe you feel really good about it, so you add the other knee. If you didn't feel really great about it, do the other side, just the one leg. Now, if you feel really good, you could do a floating tuck, right? So you would just take your knees together and squeeze them so that they're floating in a tuck shape. Don't rush up to the ceiling. Tuck shapes are extremely strengthening and they're an excellent place to work on balance. Right? So breathing here, when you're tired, just come down one foot at a time. Sit up tall, let all that blood recirculate and flush through. Let's just close the eyes, take two breaths, stack the palms. One more deep breath, long exhale. And then two. So if your floating tuck is going well um, and your little tripod shape feels nice, your little egg shape, um, then you have two choices to get all the way up there. Um, if you haven't noticed already, we're not jumping into headstand. Don't jump into headstand. It puts way too much pressure on the neck. It's uh, better to just be patient. Take the time to build the strength. Right, so uh, from your tuck shape, you could just inhale, go straight up like a rocket ship, really finding your rib cage and your sacrum coming in towards each other. Because if your sacrum is tipping all the way over your head and maybe lose your shoulders a little bit, then you could tip over. So you want to really be squeezing your solar plexus in and your sacrum in all in one swift motion up to the sky for that vertical shape. Vertical shapes are always a little more advanced, so being patient with them. Um, and making sure that the alignment's uh, on point, right? So I'll show you um, from tuck straight up and then um, how you could go from floating tuck into stag as an alternative um, to play with more asymmetrical shape um, and a little bit more safe feeling shape because the stag knee is going to keep the core firm. Right. So if you come down into your tripod setup and get all your lines in a row, all your ducks, Right, and then you can go here, and then if that feels good, squeeze the feet up, and then if that feels good, bring your knees together. Now breathe. Now in your floating tuck, you've got two choices. The first is you just inhale, lift up one leg, and keep the bottom knee to the core into a stack shape. You want to rotate inward. If your legs are rotating out to the sides, it's going to tip you over, so keep that midline hugging in. Right? And then you can come down to your floating tuck to do the other side. And if you felt really good in your stack, say three to five breaths in, and you're like, yeah, I feel really good, Cass. Then you're gonna inhale, bring your tuck leg up and hug that midline. When you're done, you're gonna exhale, stag knee to come down. Let the blood recirculate. All right, so if that was going well, then try the symmetrical press, right? You're squeezing the midline. 
And then you can probably at this point, if you're gonna go for it, you just inhale, come right into your floating tuck. Exhale, hold. And then inhale, right up. If you go too slow, you might get stuck in this moment where the pelvis tips back. So if I go really slow, you'll see how my pelvis kind of tips back. Whoa, right? So it's gotta be confident. Inhale up so you can really firm the rib cage in and, and bring that sacrum in. When you're tired, come down slow through the tuck one foot at a time. Okay, you could also go from the stat, then the float, and then the lift. Again, no jumping would be ideal, okay? All right, so if you're starting to conquer these uh, basic shapes and variant, uh, variations, then we'll play a little deeper. We'll play with pressing, um, symmetrical pressing. So we'll learn tuck, straddle, um, stag press, and pike. Okay, so I'll start um, by just demoing for you. Um, I'm gonna just demo them all for you, and then you can kind of play around with them, pause the video if you want. So the tuck press is this. Hands where you could see them, hug the elbows, break turtle shoulders. And we could do it together. And so you're gonna exhale, roll to the toes, and then inhale, tuck. The knees are gonna be slightly apart so you can squeeze the feet higher. Now you could just exhale, come down, inhale, come up, and just play with this for strength, right? Or after you inhale up, you can exhale, stabilize, make sure you feel good, and then inhale, you come right up. So it's kind of like our floating tuck but you're going straight up from the floor, opposed to stacking and then centering and then lifting, okay? Coming down one leg at a time or uh, coming down the, the way that you came up. So the next one is going to be um, your straddle press. That's what I would play with next. Um, and you can enter from a wide-legged stance if you're flexible enough to let the crown hit the head and your hands are in proper placement. Sometimes people will come from this shape and then their hands are really close to their head and then they end up doing somersaults, right? So that's not gonna be the best move. Make sure those hands are where you want them. Um, if you can't get your head down from this shape though, just bring your knees down to bring your head down and then take your feet wide, okay? Now from here, you kind of like exhale, roll to those toes, lift high through the pelvis, squeeze everything inward, and find that fire, and then inhale, go wide to the sides to come up. Right? Hug that midline as you exhale at the top. Firm the rib cage in, and take the sacrum and the heel stack. And when you're tired, you're gonna exhale, slowly straddle down, and then you can kind of give your neck a little release, tuck down the skull. Right, so giving your neck a little love in between feels really good. Right. Um, so, Sometimes with straddle, we try to take a shortcut. So you want to go into the depth of your flexibility as much as you can on your way up. If you try to take a shortcut, um, meaning you're like going in, like the straddle is smaller than what you're capable of, um, then sometimes it can feel kind of lopsy and weird and um, you won't have as much power. So press into the depth of your flexibility to come all the way up with that inhale and exhale stabilize. If straddle pressing is going really well, you could play with... Um, uh, asymmetrical pressing, so your stack press, um, or even an L press, and I'll show you both of those. Right, so you bring yourself down, one leg up, hands, elbows, shoulders, and then you exhale, roll to the toe, and inhale, stack. Right, so that's your stack press, just rolling out the toe, and then inhale up, exhale, stabilize. Your L shape press, and you have one leg up, and this is if you're really, uh, if your hands are more flexible, it's more accessible. You exhale, roll, and then you inhale into your L. And then maybe you let it go all the way up through that L. Right? So you can exhale and inhale L or go all the way up through the L to exhale, stabilize. Same with the stag. You can exhale, stag, right? Inhale up, and then all the way up if you want that. Okay? Coming down as it feels safe. And then the last one, of course, it's your pipe press. Right, so on the pike press specifically, the weight of the legs um, is counterbalanced by a little tip back in the pelvis. And the most important thing is that at the midway point, you're gonna see my pelvis is shifted back a little bit. On that midway point, I'm, gonna, I'm going to energetically draw uh, the sacrum and the rib cage in to lift my legs vertical so that I don't tip back. Because if I don't bring my sacrum in as my legs lift up, Right, so if I don't press in as my legs lift, my pelvis will be here and it'll tip me over into the wall or into a forward roll or things like that. So it's hugging the midline on your way up and I'll show you that now. Exhale, 
exhale and inhale. Exhale, stabilize, find all that work. Okay, and then when you're done, exhale, come down. See how that pelvis and that halfway point leans back? That's why on that way up, you have to squeeze the sacrum in. Because if you don't, it's going to tip you over. Okay? All right, so that's a lot to take in, a lot to play with. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments, or you could always just uh, go on my website, CassandraJustine.com, and uh, send me an email. Um, you guys, I hope this was fun for you, that you learned a lot. Um, have such a beautiful day. Namaste.